So it's a beautiful day, you're out there doing street photography, hunting for your next best masterpiece. What is the first thing you do when you come home and look at your files on your computer? You go straight to editing? No, 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 big mistake. There's another step you need to take before you even edit your photos. And that is properly archive your photographs. This is a topic that many street photographers or photographers in general neglect because uh, it's, it's boring. You know, we want to talk about lenses, we want to talk about the work itself. So I started taking photos when I was around 13 years old, so two decades ago. But it wasn't until two years ago when I realized that all my street photography work started to accumulate on my hard drives and it all became a big mess. So I sat down and took care of it and developed my own uh, system, my workflow. And that's what I want to share with you today. So if you haven't figured out your archiving workflow yet, take notes. Now before I show you the whole importing process, which is the most important part of this whole video, uh, I'm going to show you how my archive actually looks like. Because I'm not using Lightroom, I hate the Lightroom catalog, it's confusing to me, it's, it's slow and uh, you have to deal with project or catalog files and uh, that's not how I like to work. I'm, I'm old school and I trust my folders. So I created a little archive hard drive. It's actually just an SD card, but I created it uh, for this uh, de demonstration. My actual main hard drive is uh, this one here. It's called Data Farm. It consists out of four hard drives that are in a, in a RAID configuration. So if one hard drive fails, I can you know, replace it. I also have a cloud storage uh, backup solution, which we are going to talk about later as well. So let's pretend that this is my main hard drive. Uh, first of all, I have a media archive folder. This is my most important folder because it has all my uh, photos, my videos, audio data. I have a separate folder for documents. This is only for uh, media. So let's go in here. And I have a folder for each year. And then uh, I also have a big projects folder, which holds all my uh, finished or ongoing projects. So for example, I have a book project here that I began in 2020. And this is where all my final images of the book would be stored and also the book uh, project file. Yeah, and then uh, several other projects. Uh, my city, of course, as a street photographer, I like to build an archive of my city. Um, but let's go back into the years folder. So currently it's 2023. And this is how uh, my years folder would look like. Typically, I have folders for each city I visit. And also include the year in the in the name of the folder because if i visit for example uh, london every year then uh, if i type in london in the search bar multiple london folders will show up and uh, it will be too confusing but if i type in london 2023 then uh, i might be able to find exactly uh, the folder i'm looking for and then obviously i didn't have dinner with uh, obama it's just uh, you know to show you that if i meet a friend or someone visits me i might create a folder just for that occasion uh, and then i have a family folder and i can show you how that looks like uh, so typically i have a folder for my son for my wife uh, my brother and and if we would do a family trip for example then i would put a little folder for that in here as well okay let's go back and open up uh, a cities folder hamburg i have a folder for each month so currently it is uh, april i will show you how that looks like so this is what is in every folder that I create where I will store uh, photographs. First, I start with a raw folder. This is where all the selected raw files are imported to from my SD card. And then I also have a raw edited folder and a JPEG edited folder. And as the name suggests, this is for photos that are already edited. And then once I have these edited photos, I normally I would uh, delete the raw uh, folder because I don't need it anymore. Okay, but what if uh, there's uh, something else going on in the city? You know, I take random photos of everything. So this is why the raw edited and JPEG edited folders uh, exist. But let's say in May, uh, we have a festival here at the harbor coming up every year and uh, created a folder for that. And then in that folder, we again have uh, the raw edited and JPEG edited folders. Um, so this is how I would do it when there's a specific event. Additionally to that, I copy my keepers into my projects folder. For example, if I want to build a Hamburg archive, I go to my Hamburg projects folder. And these are the kind of categories you find in here. I take photos around the Elbe River. I take photos of festivals, the fish market, the harbor, protests, street portraits, photos of parks, newspaper headlines and text written on walls and all of that stuff. 
And if I want to find a raw file of a specific image, I type in the file name in the search bar and usually the raw file would also show up here. So let's talk about uh, my cloud solution because everything you see here is of course offline. And if my house burns down, knock on wood, uh, then all my data is lost, right? But not if I back up uh, my files into the cloud as well. And I use pCloud for that. Uh, I'm not sponsored. I paid for, for pCloud myself. I bought a, a lifetime plan. So you only pay once and then you have, um, I think I have two terabytes storage and I can use that as long as uh, pCloud exists. There are some reasons why I went for pCloud and not some other service. First of all, they let you uh, select between uh, servers in, in the US or in Europe. That was a nice feature. And then uh, pCloud also offers uh, encrypted folders. Uh, you have to pay a little extra fee for that. Um, but that's useful if you want to store data that even they can't access. And then you can see that pCloud here is uh, recognized as a hard drive. And if we go into that, um, it's a little different from my archive uh, drive. It's a little messy. I have to clean it up a little bit. But you can see here I have a media archive folder as well. And you see it's exactly the same as my physical offline hard drive. The only difference is that I only save the edited JPEG files into my cloud. And the reason for that is of course that I have limited storage. I have two terabytes. And if I need more, I can always upgrade, but I don't think that will happen very soon. And I used to use a Google Drive to store my data online, uh, which is fine, but I, I'm, I'm not trusting Google with my data. So this is a much uh, safer solution for me. I will include the link in the description, of course. Um, probably not an affiliate link. I don't even know if they have an affiliate program, but uh, I recommend them. I like them a lot. And um, this is my solution. Look at you, still watching. Good. Yo, we have someone here who wants to learn. All right, let's talk about the most important part of this workflow, which is importing and selecting uh, the images. So let's say I came back from a day of street photography. I have my camera here. Let's get the SD card out. Let's plug it into the computer. So what I'm going to show you is what I do every day. Uh, every day I take pictures, I import them, I select them, I edit them, making sure they're archived. I'm not joking, I do this every day. Usually at night before going to bed, I have like a one or two hour window where I have time for myself. That is when I do backups. And I have two different workflows for importing my images. The first example I'm going to show you is what I do when I shoot an event or have a full SD card with a bunch of images. And the second workflow is going to be about random snapshots. Let's say I have less than 20 images, new images on my SD card, because I'm not always formatting my cards. I format my cards once they are full. So, um, but I always back up new images. Let's go. So my SD card is plugged in now and I'm not going to use Lightroom. I'm not going to use Adobe Bridge. What I use is a photo mechanic. This is an amazing tool. It's my favorite photo software ever because it makes my life so easy. Photo mechanic has been around for a long time. A lot of photo journalists uh, love using photo mechanic. And let's open my SD card here. So here are some photos that I took a few years ago in Berlin during a festival. My fest in Berlin. It's very fun. If you're in Berlin, check it out. And what's great about Photo Mechanic is that it's very responsive, very fast, much, much faster than Lightroom. And the reason is that Photo Mechanic is only using the embedded JPEG preview of the raw files. And you will see how fast it is in a minute. So I'm going to double click here on the first image. And first I'm going to go through all these images and select the ones that I want to keep. And I do that by going through these images using the arrow keys on the keyboard. And then if you press uh, two, number two on the keyboard, uh, it marks an image uh, yellow. You can use uh, green, red, whatever. I use yellow for my first selection. And then later when I edit my work, I use green for uh, the edited selection or the ones that I select for editing. You can also do star ratings, but I prefer just using two colors. So let's go back to the beginning and then let's just select them. So because I already did that, I'm going to be extra fast here. This is behind the scenes. No, maybe this. I spilled some beer on my X100F uh, on that day. Um, let's keep this one. It's funny because I don't even remember taking this image. It's like I'm looking at it at, for the first time. Okay, this is the last one. So now I just selected all the images I want to keep. 
And then uh, what I do now is here on the top right corner, you can see I can uh, highlight different uh, colors. So for example, if I uncheck all the unmarked photos, then only the ones that have a color batch are showing up. And remember, these images are still on my SD card, but we're going to import them now into my hard drive. So I'm going to select all of them, uh, right click any of these images here, and then here there's copy move selected photos. And here we can put in some keywords. And I, what I like to do is uh, I just type in some random keywords that that work for this whole event, for the whole day. So my fest 2019 uh, Berlin festival party crowds. I actually hope that AI will take care of this later. So I'm not super strict when it comes to tagging my photos. I just do it once when I import, you know, images from one event. I think that's enough. Uh, and then I'm going to rename them as well. So I check rename copied photos as. So here I can put in a name for the for the files. And I like to start with the year. So let's say 2019 and then um, the month. So May. And I don't know what day this was. Let's say it's the 15th. And then uh, I will type in Berlin. So location. And then the event name, my first. And then uh, I type in the camera and that's it. Uh, and then I'm going to set it as a, a sequence and you can see a preview here. So th this is how our images are going to be named. And all that's left to do is to press copy and it's going to ask me where I want to uh, save these files. And then I'm going to create a new folder. So MyFest 2019 and this could be saved under Berlin under the 2019 folder. And then of course we're going to create a raw folder for the raw files and this is where I'm going to import these files too. So I just closed down Photo Mechanic because I don't need it anymore and here are my imported raw files and as you can see they're all properly named. So the next step would be to edit these photos and put them into the JPEG edited and raw edited folders. But of course I have to be realistic here if I shoot a wedding for example and I have 3000 images I might not want to do this right away, but with my street work, I do this as fast as possible. So let's just do it right now. So because I don't use Lightroom for editing, I use uh, Photoshop. Photoshop is my main editing tool and I use Camera Raw to develop my raw files. So let's open up Photoshop. So Photoshop is open now and I hopped onto the right side because I need space on the left side. You will see why in a minute. So I'm going to select all these raw files and I'm just going to drag and drop them into Photoshop and that will open up uh, Camera Raw. Now I don't over edit my images. What I like to do is I call this developing, you know, like developing film. I just change contrast. I just make the images presentable. If I want to go back later and spend more time on a specific file, I can always go back into the raw edited folder and keep working on it. So I'm slowly developing my images, maybe the lens correction, uh, sharpness I turn down, and then I'm going to apply all these settings to all of my images and then right click sync settings. OK. And then I can go into each individual image and adjust um, the settings. Uh, of course, I'm not going to do that now because it's going to take too much time. But once I'm done editing, I mark the final images green, which is uh, number eight here on the keyboard with Photoshop. That's what I'm going to do to all images that are edited. If I'm editing all these images anyways, I might not mark them at all because it's not necessary. So let's say I selected all the finished edits. Uh, I'm then going to select all these images again. Control A is the shortcut by the way. Right click and then filter by color label green. So now I only see my finished edited photos. And now I'm going to save them into the JPEG edited and raw edited folders. So right click again, save images, and I need to create new folders for that. So JPEG edited and raw edited. So I'm going to start with the JPEGs, select JPEGs, um, high quality, sRGB, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then I'm just going to save them. Now the JPEGs are saved. And then again, right click, save images, this time we're going to save the raw files, select the right folder, raw edited, and then uh, DNG, great, and save. And now all the photos from the event are edited and sorted. 
So you can see under JPEG edited, the file name stays the same. It's just a different format. Now it's JPEG. Now I can post them somewhere or send them out to people. And if I want to edit, uh, continue editing on the raw files, I can go into raw edited and have the same images, but uh, raw files. So I wanted to show you one more workflow for my casual snapshots, photos of my family. And instead of showing it you step by step, I'm just going to explain it to you because this video is getting too long. So basically I just go straight into Photoshop, Camera Raw, and then edit my raw files of that day. And then I'm just going to save them into the JPEG edited and raw edited folders. And that's it. Because if I just shoot like 10 or 20 images of my son, for example, I can just do the selecting inside Photoshop. And that's an easier way for me to deal with all these snapshots. <laughs> Give yourselves an applause because you made it until the end. Hopefully this was useful. Uh, I hope you learned a few things. I know my workflow isn't perfect, but it works for me at the moment. And I would love to know what you guys are doing. Do you have a better workflow? Or if you do things differently, let me know or let my audience also know. And then we can all learn from each other in the comment section. But archiving is very important. So I encourage you to start doing it right. Start today. And uh, then you can go on and take photos and, uh, and know that your images are properly stored and you can find them when you need them. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.